What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. But when you're looking at a prospect, how do you weigh things like the offense that they play in, team success, offensive line play, if it's a running back, the competition that they're facing, and like the other skill players around them? For instance, like, you know, if you have uh, a Clyde Edwards Hilaire who's at LSU and everything's awesome, you know, how do you rate that versus like a Cam Akers where you're at F FSU and you can clearly tell that, you know, the level of players around them is just it's just not clicking right now it's not happening how does how do you weigh all those things when you're evaluating a prospect yeah it's such a great question i'm glad you guys asked it because it, i wish it would be asked more often and really the the answer is again about how you create your process because conceptually when you're trying to study a player you want to make sure that you're isolating all the different skills in whether it's athletic, technical, conceptual, or intuitive, all the different types of decision making and techniques and athletic abilities of that player and isolated as much as possible to different tasks. And if you do that and you keep and you really magnify it to to the minutia, the in-depth tasks, then what happens is that regardless of the outcome of that player's uh, uh, you know, of the, like the yardage outcome or the production outcome of that, that play. Mm -hmm. um, if you see, if you've isolated it enough, you can see whether that player was successful or not, regardless of how, of whether he was successful success. or not yeah. Yeah, to the play success. And I've learned that over and over again, because, you know, there were guys like I had high grades on Ahmad Bradshaw in a, in a game against Tennessee where he literally averaged less than a yard per carry. I had a high grade for Matt Forte against an LSU defense that literally could out the entire LSU team could outlift all but one player on Tulane. And Matt Forte <laughs> averaged less than three yards per touch on in that game. And he earned high marks on my uh, squad. And in a, but in contrast, I've had guys like Bishop Sankey who've like run all over people yardage wise who didn't make the cut as well in terms of I had concerns about him because what you learn is that if you're isolating the correct behaviors, then even if they don't have success on the field, you're still able to, you know, you're still able to find out whether that player is doing the things that he needs to do that are projectable to the league. Um, and so, yes, it's nice to be able to say that a player, you know, that a wide receiver was able to win over, you know, a top notch cornerback and to be able to do things on that level. And, and certainly that can be helpful in terms of validating, you know, maybe speed or athletic ability, but I use the analytics for the, for the athletic ability. I lean on that more than anything to, to look at athletic ability and I try and match it to the field, which we can talk a lot about a little bit more later. But yeah, when I look at this stuff, I find that as long as, as long as I'm isolating everything that I need to in terms of processes, then it really doesn't matter who they play or who they who their surrounding talent is um, because they're doing the things that they need to do um, to make good plays, even if they don't have it. All right. Well, I mean, I'm, that all comes back to analytics there, I guess. You know, <laughs> it all comes back to that that job training of, of breaking all those little tiny details down there. So it's uh, all comes full circle once again. <laughs> <laughs>